A's Extra. Welcome back to the Anglers Extra pregame show ahead of Chatham and Harwich. Second to final time this season, this time at White House Field. It's time for the manager show with Chatham manager Tom Holliday, Emmanuel Barbari. Tom, you're coming off a day off, but the day before that, an explosive offensive effort in the 13-10 victory at Orleans. When you heard those balls leave the bat, what came to mind? That um, that it's paid off. You know, the uh, the summer, you know, it seems like it's, okay, it's winding down, but you, sometimes you never really understand whether you got anything done or not. And uh, to hear balls jump and sound like men hitting it instead of early on, really, it was like bloops here, bloops there, you know, and we just never found a rhythm, uh, never found barrels, really. And, boy, now when you, it's just kind of, they're fun to watch in batting practice. And the other night in that game, I mean, those were explosions all over the place. And uh, it, it's just good to see kids stick with something and, find something that works and uh, you know what uh, if we're done here in four or five days uh, to see the improvement that you watch BP tonight um, kind of makes it all worthwhile. Normally the hitting does evolve in a Cape League season but over the final week or so when teams start battling offensively what can you learn about these players about these teams? Well you learn about the guys that that's you know try something different stick to it make it work um, you kind of learn that uh, well, you start thinking, like, what would this look like if we played 120, 150 games? How good would we be? We'll never, we're never going to know that. But the bottom line is, is like, uh, this is about player development. Uh, you do kind of like to win. Uh, you don't want to ever teach kids how to lose. But uh, more importantly, you, you kind of hope that people are paying attention to them professionally because these guys stick it out all summer. It's a long season. You know, the college year was, was long this year. And the guys that stuck it out, you know, you learn to admire them. Uh, you, you know, you root for them during next season. And, uh, you know, it's kind of like what, what this is all designed to be. You had Victor Medeiros go six innings in a start a couple of days ago. With pitchers maybe being a little bit more fatigued at the end of the summer, given that they have something to prove, how much do you consider letting someone ride out? Oh, no. Six would be a max. And, and again, they're getting six days off. And, and the pitching has been mapped out all summer. And we've almost stayed right on it. Uh, nobody's going to be asked to be a hero. We're not going to do that. Uh, we're going to start wing quest tonight. Uh, and Carmouche is going to come on top of him. And we got three relievers right now. That's all we got. We'd like to avoid the, the guys that work, you know, the day before the day off and try to come back with Bragg tonight. But it's not a very deep bullpen. So. Uh, you know, it's like it's like anything else. You'd like to win. We know we got to win every night right now. And uh, we were tempted to short rest, maybe run Keen out there tonight, and then give him a day off and then use him again out of the bullpen. But, uh, you know, he got a some kind of a, a, I don't know, some kind of acupuncture shot or whatever, pins and needles, but he's not going to be able to go tonight. So we're just going to stay on, right on online with our pitching. Someone that's helped you win is Lyle Miller Green of late. You moved him down in the batting order a little bit, and with two strikes, it seems his approach has shortened up as opposed to earlier in the season. What what noticeable difference have you seen? Well, I think early on he just he just attacked balls. You know, it was like um, nothing going on, no no instruction, no nothing. Just go out there and see ball, hit ball. Then he he started struggling. You know, people started really jamming him, pitching him in, and then. The, the door open for some instruction. And some of the instruction, when you get to those big, strong guys, it's pretty hard to teach them how to get inside, you know, 94s in. And, uh, you know, he struggled for a while. And, again, he's one of those kids, he's smart. He's really, really strong. And then I changed positions on him. You know, I moved him from the outfield to first base simply because Grice left, you know. And uh, he did it without saying a word. But I really think it affected his bat. Mentally, uh, I think he feels better in the outfield as, as a hitter. And that, that happens. That works. Uh, not necessarily good either, but that works sometimes against you. But uh, Lau's like right now going down the stretch, and, and he's much more relaxed. Uh, you can see a little bit more relaxation in his legs when he's swinging. He's not strong and stiff like some guys get when they go bad. They get all muscled up, you know. And I've always said it, you know, like um, don't, you know, don't use the word try harder. You know, the more you fail, the harder you try, the more you fail. And, you know, you just keep trying to say, hey, man, 
relax and let it come back to you. And, you know, he's he's that way right now, you know. And, God, we got we have some right-hand hitters right now that are like, they're fun to watch in batting practice. I mean, they hit it out all over the place. You know, and then you add McLean, and now you got a guy that other people sit there and watch and go, wow, this guy's pretty good. And, and you know, it's, it's it, hitting's contagious. And, and right now, I mean, like I said, we got five left. Uh, we're going to play those five. You're not going to see anything. Nobody's going to look for a rain out. Nobody's going to look to turn the sprinklers on. That isn't happening. You know, we're going to we're going to play it. We're going to enjoy it. Well, you mentioned winning streaks and winning being contagious, hitting being contagious. Before last game, you mentioned you wouldn't mind if the penny went away. You said if it went away in the wash, it wouldn't matter. But then your team won three straight. So how superstitious are you now? The penny's in my right pocket. Still it's there. It's not going to leave. I just found another one walking out here, so now I got one in both pockets. And uh, and you know, again, we got to make sure the bat boy knows it wasn't 1887, right? Because they know he's going to think that, oh, he went out and found another penny. He's going to go cash that penny in. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm going to give it to him if I can remember which bat boy it was that that found it. But uh, hey, superstition's part of it. I mean, yeah. I tell you what, you go back in time when when you played. I mean, there's days when you wear the same jock strap every day, and even if it doesn't get washed, you still wear it, you know, and that, that's kind of one of those gross things about baseball. I mean, superstition exists, and I've seen guys do crazy things, but uh, it, it, it does, it's a part of this game. Those pennies cashing into victories of late. Chad manager Tom Holliday, appreciate the time. You bet. That's the manager's show. Let's send it back up to Ben Shulman as the pregame show continues.